Yeah, you see, I am an officer of the law. Everyday carry for me is uh, being a New Yorker, especially being an upstate New Yorker. Um, it's a subject that, especially in recent weeks, has been all over the news due to a lot of just nonsense happening at the governor's office. Uh, but I'm not going to get into politics here. Uh, what I just wanted to go over what I think of everyday carry and what I actually carry. Um, so in my case, I don't have a single firearm that I use as my EDC. Um, based on the season, based on where I'm going, what I'm doing, those sorts of things, that determines what I carry. However, if I had to pick one of my firearms that I uh, carry the most often, it would be this one right here, which you just saw me firing. Um, this is my Ruger. I'll show you all that it's clear. Okay. Nothing in the chamber. And hammer down. Okay. Uh, this is my Ruger SR 1911 in 45 ACP. Okay, it is a 1911 for those of you who aren't familiar with the platform and this is by far if I had to trust my life to one pistol this would be the one um, I've had thousands and thousands of rounds through this and to date I've only had three malfunctions um, and I keep track of malfunctions with any firearm that I get very closely um, because I always want to know what is actually the most reliable thing I've got. Now, that being said, the three malfunctions I've had with this in, I want to say it's roughly 2,000 rounds I've put through it. Um, one malfunction was a stovepipe as a result of me limp wristing it, which was in the first couple weeks of owning it. And the other two malfunctions I've had were with faulty reloaded ammunition. Um, one of them I had a case rupture, which caused a feed issue. And the other was a squib load. Um, those are the only malfunctions I've ever had with this gun. Um, I have fed it everything under the sun. It feeds hollow points. It feeds regular round nose. It feeds soft lead. It feeds anything uh, that you give it. It will eat it up and spit it out without hiccuping at all. Um, it's ex incredibly accurate for what it is. And for the price point, I really don't think you can beat it in the 1911 world. Um, I would pit this up against the best Kimbers. 
and even maybe some Wilson Combats in the lower tier. Um, but I chose this because I've always had good experiences with Ruger. Um, I believe in the company, I believe in what they do, and I believe they put out a very fine product. Um, and this is definitely something I would trust my life to. This was not bought to be a competition 1911. It was not bought to be a, you know, super high tier target pistol. This was bought to be an effective sidearm for everyday use, plinking at the range, and just general training. Um, I wanted something simple. I wanted something that was true to John Browning's design. I didn't want any of the extra frills or craziness that I see on a lot of stuff out there that goes for much higher price points. And I have not been disappointed at all by this pistol. Um, the one thing I have been a little bit, and this is just me, I'm not a fan of the Novak sights. Um, from Ruger, these are sighted for, I believe it's 15 feet. To me, that is not adequate. Um, I, I want my pistol to shoot at 50 feet dead on. Everything in between, in my book, you don't really even have to aim. That's point-and-shoot territory, so why would I want sights when I'm just doing point-and-shoot? Um, granted, that's not most people's philosophy, but that's mine. If you're trying to get someone off you within that distance, you're not really aiming. You are point-and-shoot at that distance. Um, so that's my one gripe about this. Otherwise, it's been excellent. Um, the only modification I've made to it is I put on a Wilson Combat uh, A1 style arch. Okay, I don't remember the specific model number of this version, but I wanted the stainless steel, so I got that. And that's because I have rather large hands, and I needed just a little extra. Okay, um, so let's take a closer look at this thing. Okay, so this is a non-guide rod 1911 that was the biggest thing that I was looking at when I was purchasing I did not want a 1911 with a guide rod it's not how they were designed and I didn't want to deal with one um, I, I personally think that even though they might make it a little bit more accurate they're not worth it in reliability so I went with no guide rod okay um, serrations on the slide are excellent they really are. They're fantastic. Um, they do tend to pick up a lot of grit and grime um, just from going in and out of the holster, but still very good. Um, one of the other things I had been looking at is I did not want serrations on the front of the slide for this because I wanted it to be slick going in and out of the holster without chewing up the holster or my pants or whatever else. Um, that being said, I have noticed not having those serrations, you can still do press checks, but you need to have some good grip strength, otherwise you're not really going to be able to do that. Um, luckily I don't do a whole lot of press checking because this does have a sight notch in the barrel so you can see whether there's brass in there or not. Um, I don't trust that, so I do still check it, but uh, it's perfectly doable as long as your hammer is cocked. Um, so there's that. Everything else on this has been fantastic. Um, as far as quality, nothing has worn out. Um, hammer, springs, everything are still as original. Like I said, I'm somewhere, I'm more than 2,000 rounds, but I don't think I've quite hit 3,000 through this yet. Um, and I purchased this when this was the only model available. There weren't any, uh... The, the other options were not there yet. They just had this. It was a 1911 in 45 ACP. Um, and it's excellent. Now, other little gripes I've got. Okay, the beaver tail on this is a little sharp. Okay, it's it shoots great. It feels good in the hand. But when you're actually carrying it, that beaver tail will dig into you like nothing else. Um, same with the hammer. The... Uh, the sides of the hammer, I think they should have been polished a little bit better and rounded off. Um, the hammer is on this is a commander style hammer and it's very square. Um, 
perfectly reachable with your thumb. Okay, can do everything one-handed, but it is rather sharp. And that's something that can be solved easily by a good holster. Um, unfortunately, I have not found a great holster for this. Um, I found a good holster, but not a great holster. Um, what I've been carrying this in is the Relentless Tactical. Okay, I don't remember the exact model number, but it's just a standard flap, a uh, standard pancake holster, um, which does it is for what the it is price wise. It works very well. Okay, it covers everything it needs to cover, and when it's on my belt, the safety does not get shifted easily. Um, that being said, the safety is very positive on this. Okay, when I got a really good snap to it and you know when it's on or off and I tend to be one of the people that rides the safety while I'm shooting that way it's just got very nice handling to it slide release is pretty good I have no issues there and it just it fits really well in the hand it's nicely made it's a no frills nice 1911 it's stainless which is I think a huge huge benefit uh, especially on an everyday carry you are less likely to have it looking bad now mind you this has been in my belt nearly every day for about six years now and it still for the most part looks like it's fresh from the factory um, there's no noticeable scuffing not really anything the most wear I've seen on this is in the trigger itself because it's aluminum it's got just a little bit of wiggle to it, but it's really not bad at all. And the trigger is excellent on this, as it is with any 1911. On this one, I find it's really nice because it is already given somewhat of a trigger job from the factory. It's got a uh, travel stop in it. It's a very nice, crisp two-stage trigger. Okay, I, am, I prefer two-stage on everything. And I believe... Let's see, how much is this? I'll say it's probably three and a half, four pound trigger, which is exactly what I like. I tend to like about three and a half pounds. Um, it's an excellent trigger. You have very good feel on it. Um, it the brake is very crisp, and I really could not ask for a better trigger. Um, one thing I do wonder is if I had a slightly longer trigger, I might like that more, Just, but that's just because I have large hands and fingers um, I think that might be a benefit just for me but um, other than that no real issues the magazines that came with it were excellent it came with a seven rounder and an eight rounder okay um, for carry purposes I keep the seven rounder in the gun and the eight rounder as the backup um, I find that works best because these mags and any you know steel floor plate 1911 mag has very sharp corners that dig into your sides if you're a little heavier like I am um, I've definitely gained a little weight in the past year with my uh, health issues but we're working on that um, as far as what ammo I carry okay um, in the present moment I carry whatever I've got um, the ammo shortage has definitely made uh, my normal choices a little bit more cost prohibitive. Um, so if I'm just putzing around, I'm use actually using my own reloads, which are just, uh, they're loaded to GI ball spec, but I'm using uh, unjacketed soft lead bullets, 230 grain. Um, and that's basically just because I'm worried about over penetration if I ever did have to use it and it's my personal opinion that soft lead is less likely to over penetrate due to the fact that it's less likely to hold itself together long enough to go all the way through whatever target I was shooting at um, I just think there's less risk there uh, at least on the hand load side of things um, normally I would not recommend carrying hand loads but I've worked these up and I've gotten very confident in them that they are reliable they are accurate 
and they are adequate for the job without being anything crazy power wise that would cause problems in court if something did happen um, that being said this is what I've been carrying but what I would normally be going for, because I don't like the idea in general of carrying hand-loaded ammunition for defensive purposes, um, what I normally carry is these little guys right here. Okay, this is Black Hills ammunition, which I'm really a huge fan of, uh, even though they've gotten quite expensive in the past couple of years. Uh, these are 185 grain jacketed hollow point. Okay, nothing fancy, but it is good, solid, dependable ammunition that is good for defensive loads. Um, I purchased these a couple, maybe like a year and a half, two years ago, and uh, that was when the prices were just starting to go up. So I managed to get this box of 20 for what's the sticker say here? 24.95 in West Virginia um, I was visiting family so it's still it's not crazy expensive compared to some of the other stuff um, but I would carry this I would carry spear gold dot um, I don't really trust Winchester defensive I just I just don't like what they've got um, so that's what I work with there now the question is why the heck would I want to carry a full size 45 um, as my everyday carry. And well, the answer is it's what I've got. Um, at the time I purchased this, I wasn't exactly the wealthiest man around. I just wanted something good, solid, and dependable. Um, so this is what I got. I went to my gunsmith and dealer who someday I'll probably put a plug in for maybe we'll take a visit and talk a little bit with him um, he got me a very good price on it it was a Ruger product so I knew I was getting something that was gonna be good quality um, and has good customer service so this is what I went with now the one improvement that I would make which I'll probably do myself is I have got this relentless tactical holster Okay, I don't feel like making a, an entire holster myself from scratch, but what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to sew on a flap of leather somewhere around here to help protect me from these two hard edges, because these dig into you like you wouldn't believe. Um, even with you know a shirt between you and the gun, this will leave a mark, it'll scratch you, um, it's not very comfortable and it pokes you. Um, this is, it's, that's the one problem I have and that's mainly due to the fact that this holster is just not quite long enough going out this way. Um, so I'll be doing that at some point. Um, I'll just be putting a little extra flap of leather on here and that'll help keep me from getting dug into. Other than that, it is an excellent holster. I've quite liked it. It's held up well. Um, now, what about concealing this thing? Um, It's kind of tough to conceal a full-size 1911 adequately without printing. Um, pretty much, you have to wear some sort of outer garment, a light jacket, something to that effect. Hawaiian shirts. In the summertime, that's what I use, is I wear Hawaiian shirts a lot with an undershirt underneath, and that allows me to conceal this pretty decently. In the winter time, I'm wearing a jacket, which makes this super easy to conceal, and I can even use an outside the waistband holster in some cases. But that's generally how I carry this, and it's what works for me. I do carry strong side. I don't like the uh, appendix carry makes me nervous the couple times I've tried it. I just don't like having a muzzle pointed that close to my sensitive areas. So I carry strong side. I've been thinking more and more about getting a shoulder holster or carrying uh, on the cross draw. Not sure if I'm going to try that yet or not, but we'll see. i got to see how concealable they are for my body type. Um, there is no golden ratio for anyone as far as concealment. So what happens when this is too much for me to carry? Right? Maybe I'm going somewhere, maybe it's a really hot day, 
Maybe I'm wearing formal attire. Maybe I'm wearing, you know, shorts or something that I think are a little too light to really hold this up adequately. Well, that's where my backups come into place. Okay, I've got, for formal occasions, I've got the Minurin PP, which you've all seen, I believe, on the, if you were on the Facebook page, you probably got a little sneak peek at it. Okay, um, this is in 32 auto. Okay, this, and I absolutely love this thing. I did a full restoration on this, including the finish. Um, so I think I've probably got the only browned Minurin model PP in 32. Um, and I absolutely love this thing. This is a great little pistol. Shoots really well. And this is what I carry when I need something that is completely concealable, small, lightweight, non-bothersome for thin or lightweight clothing. This is what I carry in that situation. Um, I'm also thinking about making myself a little boot holster for it. And I might try using this as a boot gun in the future. I'm not really sure if that's what I'm going to do, but I'm going to at least try it out. So there's that. And then what happens when I just don't feel like carrying something as heavy as the 1911? Well, in that instance, okay, maybe it's winter time. I've got a big jacket. So I've got this awesome holster from Bullard Leather in Bullard, Texas. Okay, um, I, I quite enjoy their product, even though their website isn't the greatest. Um, very nice holster. And I've got that paired up with my CZ83. Okay, this is in 380 auto. Um, this is a fantastic pistol. Um, I've had I haven't been carrying it because I've been sorting out some little quirks and issues with it. In particular, the rear sight has been shifting quite a bit on its own. Um, so I have to do something getting that pinned. And the other issue that I ran into is it's really tough to find New York legal magazines for this that actually work. So I actually managed to find a couple and I did have to do a little bit of creative smithing to make them work, but I managed to find a couple of uh, 10 round magazines that actually work in this thing. Um, so this is work in progress, but this will eventually be what I carry most of the time. Um, just because it's shorter and lighter than the 45 and uh, it's just what does the trick. So as far as shooting the Ruger, the, uh, the 45, it shoots very well. Um, it's a 1911. It shoots like a 1911. It handles like a 1911. It's just an excellent pistol. And in a state with magazine capacity restrictions, I don't see why you'd carry any other. Um, especially when our laws state that even though you can own a 10 round magazine, you can't load it with more than seven or eight um, outside of a designated firing range or in your home. So if you're limited to seven or eight rounds, why wouldn't I carry a 1911? It has, there's no benefit of carrying anything else over it because it's not like you can legally carry more rounds if you have a 10 round mag. Um, so why wouldn't I carry a 45? And if I'm going to carry a 45, why wouldn't I carry a 1911? Right? I like manual safeties. That means that Glock and most of the striker fired pistols are out because they don't generally have a manual safety. Um, I, if I was going to carry a 9, I'd probably get myself a CZ. I still would like to get myself a CZ because I actually don't have a 9 mil right now. Um, so, we shall see. Uh, let me roll in some shooting footage here. Doing uh, just a couple little practice drills. Um, I don't normally carry in condition 3 like you're about to see, but I wanted to practice it anyway. It's always good to try something that's not what you usually do. Um, most of the time I carry cocked and locked, but I wanted to try carrying condition three just for giggles. Um, it helps develop skills, especially if you're doing, uh, drills on the range. So enjoy. Thanks for watching.
Oh, that's freaking sweet.